So we've been dealing with polynomials for a little bit of time, uh, a little bit of time formally at the moment, but actually a long time ever since, well really, like year eight, the first time you touched like linear equations and then had to graph them, right? Those were polynomials, just the very, well, more or less the simplest kind we ever had to deal with, right? We just didn't give them this fancy name because we didn't want to freak you, your 13 year old brains out. But you've been dealing with polynomials for a long time and now finally we're kind of really digging deep into how do these things work, um, which is why, Adding polynomials, subtracting polynomials, multiplying polynomials, all of these things are really easy. They just kind of follow all the algebraic rules that you already know. Division though, which is just like the next operation, turns out to be a bit of a headache. Though a totally manageable headache, just when you first look at something like, for instance, we drew it down with me. Uh, what should we come up with? Um, how about something like this? You can jot that down. When you look at something like this for the first time, you're like, where do I even begin? Uh, that guy up the top, I've crafted to be awkward and difficult to factorize. In fact, you can't factorize it, not, not nicely. Um, and then that guy down the bottom doesn't seem to want to go into the top. There's no nice, neat cancelling, like when you first introduced to, got introduced to limits. Do you remember when you had to do stuff like this? Uh, limit as h approaches 0 of, and then you had some, fraction, some polynomial at the top in h, like a quadratic and something like this down the bottom, and you knew, you knew, fingers crossed, if you did everything right, then you would get an h minus 3 on the top, and then you could cancel, cancel, and everything was nice and neat, and you could move on to the next question in the exam, right? But this is not like that. This is a mess. Where do you even go, right? So we're going to spend some time working out what to do with this, and it's an algorithm. It's a process that you can go through. So most of your time and effort is really going to be on answering that question of how do you do this? What's the algorithm? What are the steps? What's the recipe I need to go through? Okay, You will come out the end of this lesson feeling good because you can do this, right? But much more imp important than how, you always have to ask this question in maths, right? Is why do we even care about this at all? Like what's, what's the point of all of this? And I'm going to give you, hopefully by the end of this, we'll see how we go for time, Mrs. Lee's a bit rusty, we'll see. I'm going to give you three reasons for why and conveniently, I promise I didn't do this entirely on purpose, but all three reasons start with the letter I. Um, I'm partly obsessed with alliteration, so I guess that's why. Now, I will tell you what the three reasons are, but none of them will really make any sense until I show you how to do this, okay? But I will tell you what they are just to whet your appetite. Um, the first reason is insight. Math is about understanding, right? You want to understand an object, turns out, if that object is a polynomial, then dividing it can give you great insight into what actually makes it tick. That's the first reason. Um, the second reason is we know how to do very simple integration and finding of primitives, but only for a very small family of functions, really nice, neat ones. Okay? Now that's going to grow and expand all the way through next year, but polynomial division, it turns out, is one of the really handy tools which allows you to integrate like a wider variety of functions. Things like this, which you would think, I don't have a rule for that yet. Well, polynomial division will help us there, okay? And the last one's a bit like a philosophical reason. It's the hardest one to explain, but it's kind of the neatest one, and we'll leave it to the end, which is that it illustrates polynomial division as a process, illustrates something really neat about algebra as a whole, because that's what this is all about, okay? So that makes sense, that's where we're going. I'm gonna now talk to you about how, and hopefully as we go through, the why will become clear, and I'll explain them all at the end. Okay, now I started out with this guy. We will tackle this one, but before you can get to polynomial division, you need to think back to just regular division. So maybe just leave this one to one side and maybe on the right hand side, make a little subheading for me, which is numerical division. Okay, someone to give me a one digit number? Seven, Seven thank you. And someone give me a three digit number. 315. I wonder if that's going to divide through. Probably not. We'll find out in a second. Okay. Now, we learned way back in year seven how to deal with divisions like this, right? We called it long division when we wrote it like this because, I mean, unless it was a small number, like 30, for which you could look at it and say, yep, I know what that is you have to kind of go through a process to work out what will the, what's the answer by the way? It starts with a Q, it's a funny name. Quotient. The quotient, what will the quotient be? And more likely than not, because we came up with these numbers randomly, there will be a leftover bit, which we call the remainder, right? So we can't see this automatically, at least unless, unless you can, in which case, 
that's good for you. Most of us cannot. So we're going to start an algorithm. And as we go through this, I want you to think about what the steps are because they're going to directly import over here. What's the very first thing that I do? It was four years ago. <laughs> it was a long time, right? What are we going to check, Chloe? Okay, so I'm going to, this guy, by the way, we said that's going to be the quotient and the remainder. This is the divisor, the thing doing the dividing. This is the dividend, okay? So I'm going to check if the divisor, 7, goes into 3. And unsurprisingly, it does not. So then what do I do? Yeah, I take the next part of the dividend as a whole. It's 31. Okay, that I can, some 7s do fit into there. How many 7s? 4. By the way, I skipped a digit. I really should have said it never fits into three, right? But then it does fit into four. Okay, what do I do with this four? Think back. Okay, so before I get to the subtraction, where does 28 come from? You're going to take this four and you're going to multiply out the front. Gives you seven times four is 28, right? And now I'm going to do my subtraction, which gives me in this case three. Okay, hit pause, right? This is kind of like the choreography of a dance. You just did four steps and we kind of all kept it in our head, at least we kind of did if you remembered, right? What were the four steps think, right? The first thing was we divided seven into, rather than the whole thing, we divided into a smaller thing because our brains can handle that, right? That was the first step. We divided, right? That gave us four. What was the next thing we did from there? Where did we go? Yeah, we multiplied. Uh, namely, we multiply this part of the quotient by the divisor we started with. Okay, then what? Then we did a subtraction. Okay, and then what do we do with that? One last step. We actually haven't done it, which is a bit sneaky. I haven't written it down. Can I, can I do this anymore? Can I divide any more into three? No, that was kind of the point, right? If I divided, uh, if I had 21 here and I had extras left over, I haven't done the division correctly, okay? I can't do this anymore, so I've kind of got to go back to the first step that I did, which is to take more digits until I can, right? So I'm going to get back this. Where do I get my extra digits from? Yeah, this guy down here, like so. Wow, we got a multiple of, well done, okay, that's nice. Um, in other words, we carry down this next digit, right? Carry? And then we start all over again. The dance recommences, okay? And we're going to go through again. We're going to divide. Conveniently this time, we get exactly five, right? To double check, because that all, doesn't always neatly happen, right? We then go back through, right? You just did step one, again. Now we're going to multiply, which gives us 35. Now what? We subtract. At this point, I no longer have any more digits to carry. What does that zero mean down there? What's this final number? That's the remainder. Okay, now, you remember how to do this. Hopefully it jiggled some part of your memory there. I can now summarize this result by saying, okay, this guy over here, you might as well actually, because we're gonna use all of this language in terms of the polynomials, right? I wanna remind you, this is called the divisor. What was this guy again? The big number? The dividend. This, uh, the answer is that one which starts with Q, the quotient. And I already have an R there to remind us that that's called the remainder. Okay, I can write a statement now down the bottom here, which takes all four of these numbers, one, two, three, four, and combines them into one nice neat equation. Namely, that if we started with, I'm going to stay with that color actually, if we started with our original number, 315, it equals to the divisor multiplied by the quotient plus the remainder. It's kind of nice and neat. You can just read it from left to right, okay? Seven times, oops, that's a bad multiplication sign, 45, and it just so happens that our remainder is zero, okay? If my remainder was two or three, it would be hanging out on the end here. Okay, so do we remember this? Are you feeling comfortable? Is your brain happy? Hopefully, it's, it's familiar enough, even if you haven't done this for a long time, you're like, yeah, this is ringing bells, I'm good, okay? 